It's you funny because I fucked my drug counselor. <laughs> when I was more in common. When I was in the halfway house. The more in common. When I was in the halfway house, there was this badass counselor. When I got out, she used to piss test me. And I was putting, I was pulling my, I'm uncircumcised. So I was pull, pull the skin back on my dick. I was snorting coke like a motherfucker. And I said, what cleans up your piss, Get Mike? The fuck what out cleans of up here. your piss? Pool cleaner. So I would take pool cleaner and grind it uh, down on a cheese oh, grinder. Pool cleaner? Pool cleaner. What's those, that? those pills that you put in the fucking what disc the and fuck? they float around the water. I would shave that down. I would pull the skin of my dick back. <laughs> I would sprinkle pool cleaner on my dick uh, and pull the skin over and put like a little bread tie at the end. Uh, and man. I would go take a piss. <laughs> And I would pull the skin back, and the pool cleaner would go into the piss, and I would fuck up the piss test. Uh, you man, don't turn, understand, did, Mike did T. It turn color? Huh? Did it, turn color? it would just go. Bruh, bruh, bruh. And one time I put Holy Drano in that shit. motherfucker, and uh, the thing started foaming. But the, the uh, dude couldn't catch what I was doing. They knew I was fucking up the machine, Mike, but they couldn't catch it. So they sent a white chicken one day, and I'm and I would jerk off outside a little yeah. bit to get my dick hard, <laughs> and I would go in there with this Cuban egg roll, and I. would fucking pee and show her the hammer so i get out of the halfway house i move on with my life i get into comedy and i'm oh, slinging I'm, in, I'm delivering chinese food but slinging coke and doing comedy at the same time so if mike wanted coke i would go mike don't call the chinese restaurant order an egg roll and i'll deliver it and at least i can blame it on the chinese people because it was in the bag like a fortune cookie so one day I knocked on the door, and who answers the door? The drug counselor. But to boot, she had she was she was cute. She had a nice breast. She had a nice body. But the only problem with it was she had a leg, like with a limp, and it was like a mystery. So nobody talked to the bitch. Why we met eyes. Leg being we started up, swapping Joey. spit. I started fingering her. I laid her down, and what I did was I pulled the one leg off the one leg, but I didn't even pull the one the gene off the other leg. I just left it a mystery. I ate her monkey. I put my hammer in her mouth, and it was one of those long comes when it's like 20 oh, minutes. Man. When they're just looking at you because I wasn't trying to jerk off then. I was trying to get muscles. I was 33 trying to get into lifting and shit. Oh, my God. I never Joey. saw her again. She gave me like an $8 tip, and that was it. I never saw her again. Dude. I forget what her name was, but who gives a fuck? God bless oh, her. Man. When you fuck your drug counselor, you got problems, dog. <laughs> no, we had problems. Oh, I used to snort coke in the halfway house. I was slinging in the halfway house, and Mike, I was loan sharking because the rent was $75, and you had to pay it on Thursday, or you couldn't get out. See, I so can't I, get high in prison because my head be all fucked up. Oh, no, I didn't nothing. get high in prison. I, I just did acid in prison. Five, but when man. I got to the halfway house, that's when I went fucking nuts. I had the coke hidden in the fucking thing, and I would sell it in the halfway house. You can't believe like that I'm the same person today. That's why right now when they get mad at a governor or even at that judge for something they did 30 years ago, you really can't get mad at that because I was a completely different person. I was a com You change. As a human being, we adapt every couple of years that we say to ourselves, we can't act that way anymore. So I can't believe when Mike's original question was, how do you feel? How the fuck do you think I feel? I fucked my drug counselor. You know, I had no respect for nothing, and it wasn't my fault, or it wasn't that I didn't respect people, it was the 70s in New York that gave us this feeling of invincibility. And I, I'm not a crazy. big New Yorker, I, I'm not the type of dude that says New York pizza, New York bagels, I don't talk about that shit. But the heart that New York had in the 70s set me out. And then going to North Bergen and hooking up with people from Hoboken, that Italian heart from Hoboken, Gave me this "you can't kill me" feeling. Like I got the Hollywood. Hoboken's I had nothing. still a nice neighborhood. Oh, you now it's a now. real nice fucking it's really neighborhood. Really fucking nice. But yeah. the fifties and forties, it was kind of weird towards the Italians. So the Italians that came out of Hoboken had a fight. So when I moved to North Bergen, I was surrounded with these guys that had moved on Man. up from Hoboken. So I got that heart from them, plus my Cuban heart, 
plus that thing that New York had in the 70s, that going to 42nd Street when you're 13 and avoiding drugs and buying drugs for the first time. And there were fake drugs. You had to watch that you don't get caught by the police. And you had to watch that you don't get caught by the cops. How many times did you walk in one of those X-rated shows and sit on a hooker's lap when you were 14? Yes, no, listen, this is the thing, right? You were in one of these, um, we're going to one of these porn places, right? Because um, we're there, we're robbing all day, and we can't go home because so we're going to sleep in the movie theaters, right? But we got money, and you're sleeping, and next thing you know, you see some guy comes in, and he sits in the front, you think he's watching a movie, you fall in love, you wake up, then he's in a seat closer, and then you fall asleep again, you wake up, he's right next to you, right? Oh, fuck. Yeah, some fucking freaky guy trying to oh, rub your legs and your balls, and you're like, holy fuck, shit. Fuck, bro. When I went and to we're a, little kids, and we don't know these fucking freaks, dog. Fuck, bro. There was freaks. a porno theater I would go to in, like, East Orange, New Jersey on Sunday nights. My buddy got on a kick to go out there. And I'll never forget, I went out there one time on a Sunday night. And every time you go to the bathroom, a guy would just mysteriously pop up next to you in the urinal Jesus next to you Christ. and look at your <laughs> dick. You were a fucking kid. Yeah, you're a kid. And he was, like, 40. So you get to so see that up. side. I yeah. only got. We used to listen, but the whole thing we used to rob and say, "Yeah, come on, come. On, I have a sister for you. Come oh on." Oh my god! Oh, that was the whole thing to rob this fucking um, this, this fucking um, what do we call those? The tricks. Rob the tricks. Rob the tricks. Wow, get the man. money. There was a park where I grew up, Hudson County Park, and in like the summer of '80, we found out that if you stood out there, guys that would get drunk, like older guys would come over. And they'd look for people to suck your dick. We were coming home from a uh, Judas Priest concert. Uh, and we seen these young guys out there. And cars would pull up. And it was like a trick. Like, where's the George Washington Bridge? And they would go that way. And the car would turn around and the guy would get in it. Uh, so we devised a system where we'd get a guy, put, like, shorts on him with a nice wife beater shirt on with a little paddle. with a fucking, what And you put fuck? him out there with a little ball. Then the guy would get the guy out of the car. No, let me suck your dick under the tree. And then he would take him under the tree. And we would him the tree. Yeah. He would kick him yeah, in the nuts. We'd jump out of the tree. <laughs> Fuck, fucking bro. take their wallets Fuck. and run. They couldn't go to the cops. Yeah. My neighborhood as a whole, right. North Bergen, got so good at it that each neighborhood had representatives that would go down there and had their peace. And there was one neighborhood, 64th Street Field. They had a kid that was so good, he'd make the motherfuckers take him to their house. And then he would call you from there. I'm over here making that because I got the guy tied up. Like, that's how good. We were fucking kids, man. We were 16, 17. It was a different fucking world. Yeah. You had no like curfew. It, nothing it, it was like, like nobody, you know, there's a And comic. if you got locked up, it was better than being home. You know what I mean? You had just snacks. You had the, um, they gave you um, snacks, snacks at night. Three, um, three meals. They treat you good. Gave you cookies and milks and God, stuff. That's crazy, dude. I never went. Joey, how old are you? I'm uh, 56. I just recently turned. I'm 52. Okay. 52, yeah. We See, walked past each other. Yeah, I'm at sure. Some point. I'm sure. And I, I, when I was a kid, I had a, my mother had the bookmaking operation in the Bronx, and then we moved to 118th Street in, in, in Harlem. But then they have satellites on There's Saturday. There's no action in 118th yeah. Street. Yeah. yeah that's but what Saturday action. is the big day for numbers, so you have to develop satellite offices. And they would have an office in bed that would have like a, a little bodega that would call the numbers into them. And we were paid to walk around the neighborhood and look for different type of cars. Like that said, they would give us like 40 bucks on a Saturday. But you have to understand, they don't understand, it's jam-packed. Yeah, jam-packed. People. So it's if you saw two guys in a car... You had to run back and tell them there's two guys in the car. And all you did was walk around the neighborhood all What day. did that mean? It's like a lookout. You're like a lookout. And then there would These guys are in the neighborhood. Yeah, like there's cops in the neighborhood or there's a car down the block with weird plates and a guy sitting in there by himself. Right. They would give you like 40 bucks to just walk around the neighborhood, run their errands, go get them ham and cheese sandwiches. And then at 4 o'clock when the number comes out, the Brooklyn number, because there's three numbers. There's the Brooklyn number, the New York number. I didn't know that. I which comes out number. in number. Yeah, when you look at the total mutual of the track of the Daily News... When you open up the the Daily News, you look at the, there's always the track. They always give you, only in New York mm. do they give you the fucking track results and what the track made. So the track handle is what the the last three numbers is the number of the day. So you could bet that number, you could bet it by the number. And, you know, neighborhoods where Mike, Mike came from, where my mom had these places set up, 
people have a dream. They have a job, but they have a dream. Did anyone ever try to tell your family, no, that wasn't the number three came out? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that oh, bullshit no. type But no, yeah. but when you take the number, there's a receipt. If you take a number face to face, I have a receipt that goes three ways. It's a white copy, a pink copy.